So hi everyone and welcome to this video on the simple two-period uh, model of consumption and savings. So in this particular uh, uh, video, we'll go through a worked out problem and then we'll impose a specific functional form, derive the optimal values of consumption and investigate a couple more things. So uh, let's start. So suppose we have this generic utility function, which is a function of today's consumption and tomorrow's consumption. Notice here that we have this beta and the beta is what we refer to as a discount factor, a discount factor, which basically discounts the value of future utility because uh, utility, the utility maximization that we'll be doing is expressed in terms of today, right? So uh, it is not as valuable as today's utility per se. So it also says here that the household earns an exogenous income Y in the first period and the Y prime in the second period and can borrow or save at some interest rate R. Okay, And uh, the savings or borrowing decision is denoted by this S. Okay, So, and we assume that there are no taxes. So how do we sort of um, build how we're going to solve it? So, okay, so... We first, okay, we first build the Lagrangian, okay? So the Lagrangian can be set up as L is equal to, okay, uh, UC plus beta UC prime plus lambda times the intertemporal budget constraint. So a recall, okay, household, Okay, the household faces okay, faces faces uh, an intertemporal. That means a multi-period temporal budget constraint equal to um, C plus C prime over one plus R is equal to Y plus Y prime over one plus R. Just that just basically means that whatever I consume cannot exceed what I was endowed with um, uh, and adjusted for whether or not I can repay. So that's uh, Y plus uh, Y prime over one plus R minus C minus C prime over one plus R. Okay. Then uh, first order conditions. We have two, uh, technically three. Uh, we have with respect to C, that's going to be U prime C. Oops, C uh, plus lambda times negative one equal to zero, which implies that um, U prime C is equal to lambda. The next FOC is with respect to C prime or future consumption. So we have beta U prime C prime plus lambda times negative one over one plus R equals zero, which implies that um, la, uh, sorry beta times one plus R U prime C prime is equal to lambda. Okay, so uh, our last one is just the constraint. If you derive with respect to lambda, you get Y plus Y prime over one plus R minus C minus C prime over one plus R equal to zero, which just yields our constraint of C plus C prime over one plus R equal to Y plus Y prime over one plus R. So let's number two, three, okay. So uh, uh, we equate, okay, we equate one and two. That is the two lambdas, notice. And we get the uh, U prime C is equal to beta times one plus R U prime C prime. And this is what we refer to as uh, the so-called uh, Euler, okay, Euler equation. So the Euler equation uh, can be represented as a marginal rate of substitution as well. So in that representation, okay, if I divide both of uh, these sides by, uh, uh, if I divide both of these sides by uh, U prime C prime, okay, I get that U prime C divided by U prime C prime is equal to beta times one plus R. Right, this side here is what we refer to as the marginal rate, marginal rate 
of substitution, okay? Uh, similar to normal micro theory. And uh, it's the marginal rate of substitution of consumption today and consumption tomorrow. And what that says is it should be equal to the discount rate scaled by uh, one plus R, right? So this particular equation characterizes what the optimal consumption bundle would be. Doesn't necessarily give us what the optimal consumption bundle would be, but it characterizes it, right? So that's the interpretation of the Euler equation. Okay, so moving on. Okay, so suppose I give a specific value for the utility function. So say uh, I gave, so suppose, okay, suppose uh, u of c is equal to c raised to one over two. Okay, uh, now let's solve, solve for uh, c, uh, star and uh, C prime star or the optimal consumption. So notice that U prime C is equal to one over two C negative one over two, which is uh, basically one over two C raised to one half. And uh, U prime C prime is just gonna be the same. One over two C prime negative one half equal to one over two C prime one half. Right? So plugging into the Euler equation, plugging into the Euler equation, equation, we get the following. Okay, so we have that, um, okay, so the Euler equation recall is U prime C equal to beta times one plus R, U prime C prime. So this should be equal to one over two C one half, equal to beta times one plus R times one over two C prime one half, right? Then uh, let me uh, multiply both sides by two C prime one half. I get two C prime one half divided by two C one half equal to beta times one plus R. The twos cancel out of course. So I'm get with Z, I left with C prime over C raised to one half equals beta times one plus R. Then uh, if I square both sides to take out the one half, okay, I get C prime divided by C is equal to beta times one plus R squared. Then that implies that uh, C prime is equal to beta times one plus R squared times C. Okay, uh, from here, from here, plug this value of uh, C prime into the constraint, which is the intertemporal budget constraint. So that's equation three from earlier, this equation, okay, this equation. So if we plug that in, okay, so recall uh, it's C plus C prime over one plus R is equal to Y plus Y prime over one plus R. Okay, so we get C plus C prime is gonna be um, beta times one plus R, okay, uh, squared C over uh, one plus R equal to Y plus Y prime over one plus R. So notice the C prime disappears and we're left with just a C there. So we can isolate out, isolate out C and C will now just be a function of the primitives, uh, which is basic, uh, sorry, the, the exogenous variables and also the parameters, right? So we have that, um, we can simplify this first. So C plus beta squared times one plus R squared C divided by one plus R, Y plus Y prime over one plus R. So this cancels out uh, and we're left with C plus um, beta squared one plus R C, C equal to Y plus Y prime over one plus R. Then I'll factor out the C, you get one plus uh, beta squared times one plus R equal to Y plus Y prime over one plus R. Therefore, uh, C star is just going to be 1 over 1 plus beta squared times 1 plus R times uh, Y plus Y prime over 1 plus R. And this is optimal 
Okay, this is the optimal uh, consumption, right? Now, how do we get C prime star? Well, remember, okay, C prime star is um, uh, this beta times one plus R, okay, uh, squared, right? Squared times uh, uh, C, right? And in this case, we're going to multiply it by C star. So it's just going to be um, beta times one plus R squared divided by one plus beta squared times one plus R times Y plus Y prime over one plus R. And this is C prime star. Okay, so that's what we have. So uh, this concludes the first part of this, uh, at least uh, this lecture. Uh, in the next video, we'll explore some more properties with regards to the two-period model. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.